Hi everyone. Um, good morning, good, good evening, good night. For me, it's good night. Welcome all of you to this beginning of the new month, um, which is related to the constellation of Virgo, and of course, its potential is um, its potential is. Um, the the potential of the I am according to Virgo is the um, the I analyze. Along this whole month, what we are going to try to do is to work in tiny things like uh, more focused. Uh, that's the kind of the idea of the whole month, not to work with the bigger things, but to the tiny and specific things. So this is because when we work with this, with the consciousness, we usually work with philosophical, philosophical aspects that take us into a different and wide levels that are very open and, and too many concepts. So um, for Virgo, this would be to just focus in the tiny things. Um, the reason we are going to work with this through this month is because we are going to be with the Virgo energy which means that we must put order to all our things. So in order to work with, with this, what we have to do is to bring all this world of ideas and expressions into things, into specific things, so we could work specifically with each one of them. Maybe well, it's going to be difficult for me because I don't have anything. I don't have anything in Virgo, um, but well, it's my rising is Capricorn, so kind of earthy. But I don't. This is going to be very difficult for all the other signs of water, air, and fire. We have to work with this anyway, because one of the goals that we have through this year is try to uh, put ourselves with coherence in the side and the perspective of each one of the other 12 parts that create us. So one of the things that we did in the past, the philosophy of um, ancient times, was to realize that we are all made of 12 different energies, 12 uh, um, signs and that uh, through our life we are supposed to we are supposed to be um, to be in balance with all of them in order to be coherent we need to be in balance with every one of the 12 because we all have them within but so, but each one of us has activated more one than another so they said that in order to be in balance we need to put ourselves in the position and the perspective of each one of the 12. so in order to be in balance with each one of them what we have to do is to put ourselves in that position and to activate within ourselves uh, some of the um, potentials that each one of these 12 have so we could um, so we could appreciate with coherence all the creation. So basically what we do is to, to love unconditionally the whole process by accepting our point of view, but also understanding the other point of view and putting myself in them. So I can unconditionally understand every perspective. So from the point of view of Virgo, what we have to do with that is to perceive the 12 and say, okay, I will analyze each one of them, what they have of positive, of negative, okay, I will try to organize this positive and negative in physical aspects, emotional aspects, mental aspects, and try to put that in a beautiful uh, frame, all organized by concepts, so I can picture it and understand each one of them. Um, of course, that do, doing that for a sign of water and, um, and air, this is like a slow 
slow suicide. Uh, many of the spiritual people people are usually connected with water and air um, aspects of themselves. So what they usually do is to um, say, "I rather, I, I rather feel and perceive than just uh, go into the mind. I don't want to be in the mind and to be so analytic. I just want to feel, and I don't, I, I don't want to write down anything and and to think like that." But the problem is that if we are asking Virgo people, for example, to meditate with us and to go into the imagination, so it's natural that we may ask for some Pisces people to, to make a scheme of ideas. For sure, you maybe would say, but I am Pisces and I am very organized and so on. So yeah, for sure, it's not about the specific sign, it's because maybe you have the moon in Virgo or the rising in Virgo, who knows? So that's why maybe you are more organized than other Pisces. What we are trying to do now is to talk about the big concepts, okay? Not about the sign you are specifically, but the big concept, the big picture. I know that for some people it's very difficult because we usually believe that, um, we usually believe that, um, this we have just to feel, to perceive, and that's it. But it's not just about to feeling. Um, feeling is a part of the process, but there are much more. And is um, is to look into the tiny, uh, the step by step. Okay, to understand the step by step of how we get into just feeling. So picture this: these two people that go to the beach. And one of them is sensitive, okay? The person that is sensitive goes to the beach, takes the sun, smile, feels the breeze, feels the water. It feels like it, it, like that person is the ocean moving around and it feels the touch of the sun. And on the other hand, we have this schematic person that finds the balance and, and, to, and, they, and they feel relaxed by thinking, uh, by thinking, for example, in just one second, how many seconds it takes for each one of the waves to break into the sand? Um, how many suns would be in the sky if each one of the suns is like a uh, like a grain of sand uh, in in the beach? Um, the light of the sun is not light; it's only uh, waves of particles, of photon particles that comes to me and go through my body and and I want to understand how it works, uh, etc. So naturally what we would think is that the sensitive person goes to the spiritual path and the analytic person goes to the physical uh, aspect, okay? Um, the, sorry, the science aspect of the reality, the scientific. So these two perceptions are two that were always separated and that creates like a like a conflict in between our spiritual world. And this happens because this fight happens because the sensitive people usually say, I am from the heart. And the other people, the analytic people, used to say, I am from the mind. And in the spiritual world, we would call that uh, Consciousness, racism. Hmm? Because we always find people, for sure in our lives, that usually say, you are, you are uh, too mental. I don't like it. You are too mental. And the other ones would say, you are too sensitive. You live through your heart. That's not right. So we have these two different ways in which we usually say, to live through the mind or to live through the heart. Picture this, when we are working with um, the coherence, it's not this one, neither this one. It's not the heart, not the mind. Coherence is both of them. What we have to do in the path of coherence is not to believe that the only way to connect to the universe is by feeling, Okay, because you need to understand 
uh, how the universe works in order to know how to handle the energy of the of the universe and create your reality from through the heart or from the heart and in the other hand if you are too analytic and you are just thinking about the parts you will not be able to feel what you are understanding so we have to picture this and it will be more easy the sensitive people that live through the heart usually see the reality as a whole a complete thing but they don't see the tiny parts that create the whole thing and the schematic people they see each one of the parts by separate but they don't see the big picture they don't see the whole so to understand how this whole works you need to understand the tiny parts that creates the whole and in order to uh, to give a meaning to each one of the parts you need to realize that those parts are part of the whole so this is why one of the things that we need to understand to get is a balance between both of them so basically what happened for example is imagine a picture of people a person that lives through the heart they will see the cosmos the whole universe and they will see this is this is wonderful this is amazing i am all that and the other one the analytic person will see stars the moon uh, if it's equinox or solstice they will think about all this stuff but they will miss the whole picture the meaning of all that the sensitive person will just feel losing the details and the analytic person will lose the meaning imagine that the person that lives from the heart can see the whole picture the cosmos the sky and feel it and on the other hand the analytic person can see the constellations Virgo, Libra, etc. Imagine picture that the people that is reacted through the heart can see that we are all connected, that we are all one. And on the other hand, what you will see is that the analytic person will see the aspects of the personality of each one of the constellations. So it can talk about each one of the constellations. And it is here when we have to understand the unconditional law. None of them is unconditional. Okay, so now we have to understand. Listen to this. <laughs> Just to clarify myself, if I if I say or describe or make a theater of something, I'm not judging anyone specifically. I'm just putting the character more more visible so we could picture. Okay. So, no offense. <laughs> okay, usually the characteristic of a person that lives only from the heart, usually is these people that when you meet them, and it's a very big group of people, they go and just hugs everyone and says, I love you because you are one with me, and we are all together in this, and I hug you, and I love you, brother, sister, but they don't even know the name. They don't know who they are. They don't know anyone. Um, they, they just have this uh, ability to, to give love to everyone, even if they don't know them, because they know we are all one. So, hey, we are all one, so on. Basically, this is the one that the analytic person would call the hippie ones, okay? So, usually, if, a, if an analytic person is in one of those meetings, when when these hard people would hug them, uh, they would say, don't touch me, I don't know you, I don't know who you, who you are, you don't even know my name, um, we are separated right now, so please, air. The analytic people are the ones that usually are in the same meeting and they look around and 
just in one tiny moment, they think in each one of the persons, how they are, their characteristics. So they would say, uh, this person is, had a lack of money. This person um, had a problem with his dad. That person for sure has, uh, has been in a, uh, in a mental um, uh, institution. So they start to analyze everything. Why they are dressing like this, why, why he has these shoes. So start to understand um, each one of them. Picture this, that none of them is in balance. One of them is in the heart and the other one is in the mind. Um, and also you have in this kind of groups, the people that is in the genitals, the energy of the genitals, and they go to those groups to see with which one they would sleep. So, but that's another, another uh, day. So let's picture this, heart and mind. So we have in between these two chakras, we have two chakras more, third eye and throat chakra. Remember this, here, the, throat, the crown chakra is the mental, is the one that is uh, created through, through beliefs, okay? So, so it's constantly watching and looking for the beliefs. So this is why it has a preconception of everyone, because it's trying to look everyone from its own perception, from its own belief. On the other hand, we have the heart, which is on service. So it's giving, giving without expecting anything. In between this crown chakra, which is the schematic mind, and the heart, which is the open one, we have the consciousness here, the perception, and the truth, which is learning, the process of learning. So what we have to do is to change our perception and consciousness about our beliefs that are up there, change the perception, and learn about the other perceptions to be more open. Hmm? This process of the middle is the one that takes us to coherence. So what we have to do in order to change this, to be coherent, is to change the perception of my beliefs, change my beliefs from who I believe I am and who I believe the others are, and to open to understand the other people around and its differences. So in order to get into that coherence, what we have to do is to sit the lover one from the heart in front of the analytic person of the mind so they can talk and the heart would say, hey, we are all one. We are all connected here. We are all one. And the analytic person, the mental person would say, maybe we are connected, but we need to understand the role that each one of the 12 persons that are around here, which is the role of each one of them, of them in this specific moment and connection. What are the characteristic and the uh, and the potentials of each one of these 12 so they could feel part of this unity. So the people from the mind must understand that each one of them, the 12, are part of the team that we call unity. And the one from the heart needs to understand that in order for this team of unity to work, it must respect the, the characteristic, characteristics of each one of the 12. Each one of them will complement to each other to form like a chain. In order to, to, it will work like this because each one of them, each one of the 12, will work with its own energy and potential. Today I, will, I want to expand my explanation because it's the first day and I would like for you all to have this before um, 
for the whole month. The first thing that uh, that the mental person would do is to arrive to the meeting and to organize the chairs in a circle so each one can see each other but separated in each one in each spot in this gathering. So the mental one will organize the group because he knows the potential of each one of them. So when he knows the potential of each one of them, he will be able to seat the group in a proper position so each one aside the other one has the potential to help the other one aside. In order to exaggerate the example, he will seat someone that doesn't know to write well, but knows to speak very beautifully. He will seat him aside of the other one that knows how to write very beautiful, but doesn't dare and know how to speak. Both of them will help each other, so it will work, it will be perfect, okay? Because this person knew the potential of each one, so that's why it worked. Hmm? So picture this example, that the one that speaks very well but doesn't know how to write is a Gemini person. So it's Gemini because he knows how to speak, how to have a good speech, but thinks too much that um, his mind goes so fast that he cannot write properly. So he sits as, um, aside of a Virgo person, and this Virgo person will write very specifically and perfect, but he wouldn't talk at all. So suddenly it comes our friend from the heart, which is our lovely hippie. Okay. Imagine that this, this guy, this person that comes from the heart is the Pisces one that just arrived late, of course, uh, that he, uh, he arrives late to the meeting because it's Pisces. So he just arrives and says, hey, brothers, sisters, I love you so much. We are all one. And, and he hugs everyone. That's the normal thing that a heart person would do. So imagine that normally the Pisces one would come and when he was trying to hack, to hack the, the Gemini person, the Gemini guy would say, hey, brother, blah, 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 but not hack, just the hand and maybe some weird way of saying hi. And suddenly the Pisces guy with no respect at all, it goes and there to hack the Virgo guy. Imagine that when this guy hacks the Virgo guy that he is writing very properly, suddenly, without respect, the Pisces guy hacks him, and suddenly uh, the the Virgo guy starts to feel like like uncomfortable with the situation. Um, he didn't like that. He was disconcentrated, and after that, during the whole meeting, the Virgo guy felt uncomfortable and couldn't focus and help the Gemini guy because he was so concerned about the hack that um, that he couldn't keep going. We have to picture this, that sometimes when we say we are all one and we want to hug everyone, some people doesn't feel fine because they, they cannot relate with that same emotion and they can feel uncomfortable. Sometimes when we believe we are one, we think that we all feel exactly the same. Imagine this, that um, the Capricorn person, the, the one that organized the meeting, of course, is, is Capricorn, because he was, you know, putting the time, the organization, when it's going to start, when it's going to finish, what are the goal of the meeting, what do we want to do, exactly, all perfect. And, um, and of course, he would see how the Pisces person is, uncomfort is putting everyone uncomfortable, but maybe the Cancer person. So, of course, the, Cap the Capricorn guy wouldn't say never anything to everybody. Uh, so he would say to the Leo guy, um, can you go and talk to everybody to, to respect each other? Beyond the laughs and all the explanations, um, what we are trying to understand here is that neither one or the other are the right thing. The mental person, the mind person, 
this this person would say uh, would would organize everything according to its own belief. So it would organize the structure of everything just by saying, okay, this has a skill that matches with with this skill, and that's it. This one with this one, this one with this one, but had no idea that they all are part of a team. They put he put everyone to work with the specifics, but had no idea how to work as a team. The guy of Pisces comes and suddenly he thinks that we are all a team, but, but he thinks that we are such a team that we need to get fun to enjoy the meeting. And he forgets why the meeting was. Just that, okay? What we have to acknowledge about this is, for example, that the Pisces guy that came and wanted to hire everyone, if he would know about the personality of each one, with the same love, he would come to the Virgo guy and would just give him the hand, not the heart, just, hi, nice to see you here. And, the, um, and to the Gemini guy, he would speak and talk very, very happy of being all together, but not invading their its space. The Capricorn guy, the mental one, must understand that they are all there working for a goal, and that goal is to be in service with love. So the Pisces guy is the one that will show them why they are there in that meeting. This is why it's not about to be all separated and divided working in each of its own, neither to be all connected and just one in chaos. The goal to understand all this is to uh, picture that we have a goal, a purpose, which is to be all working for the transformation of the consciousness of a whole. But if we don't just concentrate ourselves in the difference between each other and the potentials of each one, we would not real, um, get to do the purpose because we don't understand the parts that creates the purpose. And this is why it's so important to respect the differences to achieve the whole. And this is why the people that are feeling the whole thing must understand and learn the tiny things. And this is why the persons that just see the tiny things must understand the essence and the purpose of all of them together. Hmm? So this is what we are trying to do. And the reason why we are explaining this is because if we don't understand step by step, part by part of ourselves, we cannot understand the purpose of the whole that we are. Hmm? In another way, we can understand that when we say, I am a whole, I can feel everything inside of me, but this is like saying, it doesn't matter if I have my third eye in the genitals, my sacrum in the throat, it doesn't matter, because it's all one. But no, because in order to feel the one, those must be in order. In order to be in balance, what we have to understand is to study and realize the potential of each one of the chakras, why they are in this order, why one of them must be in one spot and the other because they are helping each other, how they interact, how to take care of them, how to nourish them, each one of them. And that's how it starts to work the whole. Otherwise, I would say, I am the perfect whole, but inside is a mess. And this is what usually happens to us when we give everything to the spiritual idea. Hmm? 
in order to try to feel the cosmos, we precisely do the opposite to the cosmos. We create chaos. Because cosmos in Greek means order. So this is why if we are not in order, we will never reach to feel the cosmos. And with this, we initiate the month of Virgo. I, I, was, saying, uh, I was saying that, uh, sorry for this hour, but, um, but anyway, this is free. This is, no, you, you didn't have to pay for this, so I speak whatever I want. <laughs> so after we said all this, let's go to that. I was looking into the notebook, uh, like reading something, and I didn't wrote anything. It was all blank. Today we are related with the crown chakra. Today uh, we work with the crown chakra, which is the beliefs. Okay, in the mental aspect, we will work with the beliefs. So let's do it very Virgo. So um, crown chakra, mind level, order, beliefs. We work with the beliefs today, and we have the negative and the positive beliefs. Mm -hmm. We ended the month of I can. We are in the month of I analyze. First of all, what is a belief? So to believe means to have faith that, some, that something is going to happen. Hmm? To believe is the first one, which is think or have faith that something will happen. And the belief, the belief means that you, um, mean, means the uh, constancy or the, yeah, the constancy of thinking that something may happen, that something will happen. So a belief is something that we inherit from one generation to another, something that we expect for it to happen from many generations through time. The belief is to expect for something to happen, but we must wait for a long time, so it goes through many generations. So the belief is to expect for something to happen or to think that that thing will happen only in the way that I expect it. Is to hope or wait for something to happen or to wait for something to happen as I hope for it to happen. Hmm? So we are constantly, we are all created by beliefs. We are all made of beliefs because everything that we do in our lives is expecting for something to happen. Hmm? So these beliefs can be helpful in order to give us tools to accomplish our missions, to push us forward, or they also can give us uh, fear and to hold us back so we don't die in the intent of making stuff. A belief can be something expansive or something that limits you. So we could maybe think that the negative are the beliefs that limit ourselves and the positive are the ones that expand ourselves. So these beliefs were inherited by our family and friends and society around us. And I will point to this. It's not related with any trauma and any disease. It is only related with thoughts, ideas. For example, the belief, <clears throat> talking about the issues that we have in the world today, we maybe can have a belief, which is that there are uh, different races and the races are, uh, some of them are superior than others. That's a belief. 
some of the examples, for for example, we could maybe for sure you you have heard uh, the the belief that is uh, the only way you will reach your goals is by sacrifice. Um, uh, you have to work hard to get what you want. Those are beliefs. So I will <laughs> I will use my grandfather as an example um, as an example for this. I'm using my grandfather a lot because he's still in the fourth dimension, trapped. And uh, I am talking about him because I'm trying to help him. But until he is there, I will try to use it as an example. <laughs> Sorry, Rampa. He, he gave me uh, two beliefs that were very heavy. Okay, so I will try to picture those heavy, um, heavy beliefs that he gave to me. So my grandfather, for example, um, when I was seven years old and younger, he used to uh, read a, a, in, a, in a news, in a news, no, uh, magazine. In a magazine, he used to, um, to read a lot about answers of many things. Answers uh, of the universe, the cosmos, but in a scientific way. So um, I never read them. I was <clears throat> just there, but... His interest in those issues was something that I inherit. So I want to explain stuff also with science things to be more clear. So a belief that I have is that I have to seek for the answers because for sure I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. So I need to look and look for more answers in order to understand because I'm doubting constantly of myself. So the belief is that I don't have the answers, that always there is someone that knows better than me. So for me, it's a good belief that I inherit from him because, because it doesn't, for me, it doesn't, it, 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 is, it, it is good for me to know that I don't have all the answers. Now I know that I have all the answers within, but I love to know that there are more answers that I may don't know. And I love to reach for more, to learn more. This is why, for me, it's a good belief. Because even if I have the answers, I love to search for more options. This is why it's a good belief, because even if I know now that I have the truth within, it's a good belief that helps me to reach for more, to nourish myself, in different perspectives. And then is the other one, the negative, that is the racism. The bad belief that I inherited from him was the racism. Because to picture the idea, in 1945, when the Second World War ended, uh, a lot of people from Germany, they went to live in Argentina. And they, um, they were Nazis. And uh, my grandfather was a child in that moment, and he grew up with them, so he took his friends' beliefs. He wanted to be like his friends. So this makes you believe, this limits you, because it makes you believe that only your race has the truth. And all the answers that you were looking for, it's in only one race. So it creates an idea that there is only one race that has much more answers. This limits me, and you realize that this takes you the power. It makes you think that it's just one tiny thing when it really is bigger. So uh, sometimes we may believe that we don't have any negative beliefs, but um, we are made of negative beliefs. It limits because it um, we have to think about where are our our own limitations. So this is not about to to show to others that you uh, that you are doing it great. This is for you. The worst thing things must come here. This is to be completely sincere with yourself about what are your limitations. Hmm? What we are going to 
to understand is that even if you don't come up with many positives or many negatives and maybe you have one in one side and 20 in the other one it doesn't matter you just write it down meditate on it each one of them what we have to do with this is not to try to understand how to solve our belief what we have to try to do is to write down every one of the beliefs without thinking meditate on them means to realize that i have them and try to think about from where they come from hmm? but uh don't try to solve them we are in the vehicle energy it's not about to solve it's about to realize what do i have so this is about to analyze it's not about to solve is to write it down and try to think this comes from this yes i think this i believe that i feel this it started in that moment recognize analyze so just picture this that the beliefs is like a dead body okay the, a dead body you are not going to make him alive to heal it nothing you are doing an autopsy an autopsy of this corpse okay just that. Why did this person die? Not how do I heal them? Okay. And um, the meditation we are going to do, it will take only five minutes because that's why I spoke so much. <laughs> uh, because the only thing that we are going to do now is balance this information inside. So um, what we are going to do. Um, is to deliver myself these beliefs, this um, this uh, energy from the spirit uh, with the sound na. So the statement of today na is, I am the heaven's emissary, which is the one that brings towards me the information of the heaven. The code that we are going to work uh, that we have in mind today is fa uh, sharp or um, sol flat. This is the note that unites in the chromatic scales the notes fa, notes fa and sol. In the Saxon music notations we find it as F sharp um, or uh, G flat. One of the most known bridges for being the vibration that connects with the heart chakra and thus with the balance of all forces, giving and receiving the expansion of love. Precisely that we have been spoke, speaking today, uh, F sharp, which is the heart, and the beliefs, which is the mind, uh, that we are going to work today. Today we change the music, because uh, each month we will do different music, so thank you, Guille, for doing this music. Remember, we are in Hosu, uh, which means the second cycle. We are in the second month. So um, after this tiny meditation alignment, um, we can take a moment to write down some of our beliefs. We are going to do this every day. So maybe if you want to wait for after the alignment to do the, um, the writings, so it's good. I can tell that we started with the mind because today was mind. <laughs> mm. As always, I massage the body. thanks the body for being the anchor of the spirit in matter and I do this by stretching, caressing each part of it oh. I relax the body
I focus in my breathing. I focus my attention on the air, the oxygen coming to my nose, towards my lungs, my heart, blood, organs, and muscles. Feel the heat within my body as I take a deep breath. I feel this heat going out through my skin, sealing up my aura and all my magnetical field. I recognize the energy that is within and outside of my body. And I take all this energy to the top of my head and my crown. As I take deep breath, I see, imagine, all the energy around my body flowing to my crown, irradiating as the sun above my head. I recognize that it is in this spot where all my beliefs, negative and positive, are anchored. They are created there. I recognize that my beliefs are the filter between my I am, the spirit, with my soul and body. And at the time that this divine presence wants to get inside my body, it first must go through the filter of my beliefs. As my beliefs are very limited, the less my I am would be able to come and activate itself within me. So they act as a dam that stop the flow of energy, of the essence. As more expanded my beliefs are, the most deep the I am will get inside my body. I recognize that my spirit the I am is the messenger, the emissary of the heavens, trying to go through my beliefs to get inside my body. This is why I have to acknowledge each one of my beliefs 
and order them. So the I am can get inside of me. I start to pronounce the vibration as I feel how this belief starts to be organized as a crown in a circle. I recognize that I am the heaven's emissary. I am the heaven's emissary. I am the emissary of heaven. Take my hands to my heart. Take a deep breath. I recognize. I am the heaven's emissary. And my beliefs are the door to earth. As I recognize my belief, I am able to open the doors of heaven on earth. And take the breath and start to spread this consciousness from your heart towards all the body by stretching, massaging, yawning. And I come back here now, open my eyes. So now that we have this information anchored in our energy, we can go to write it down and to work. Thank you for being there, for the patience and for uh, set yourself to work with your inner self. Rest a lot and see you tomorrow for the third eye.